Hey guys, Jordan here. Last week we looked at the Threadripper 9960X and how it handles gaming. But let's be real, that's not why people are going to be buying it. The real strength of Threadripper is going to be the pure performance in rendering, benchmarking and content creation. So today we're going to be stacking it up against the CPUs from my last round of testing. We've got the Ryzen 9 7950X, the 9800X 3D, the 9950X 3D, as well as the Intel Core Ultra 265 and 285K. This gives us a solid set of results to see exactly where this chip lies. And also just for fun, I'm going to be showing you how it compares to my daily system, a 7600X. Not in every test, but just to eventually resolve. That's the CPU I use every day, so it'll be fun to see what happens if I swap it out for a Threadripper monster. Let's go over the test system and we'll cover the benchmarks. Of course, we have the 9960X. We've got more information about the specifics if you want to know more in my previous video but this is a 24 core 48 thread cpu with a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz and a boost of up to 5.4 that's on the asus pro ws trx50 sage wi-fi board with an octua nhu14s tr5 sp6 cooler we've got 64 gigabytes of 6000 megahertz corsair ws ddr5 rdim memory we've got an oroco ig740 pro 2 terabyte nvme for storage Asus 4090 Tough Graphics Card that's all powered by the Corsair HX1500i power supply. Now the Threadripper 9960X, the memory and also the motherboard are kindly provided by Scan Computers UK. Scan are one of the leading UK retailers selling everything from PC components and gaming systems to pro audio video gear, cameras, even musical instruments and I will leave their links down below to the website. Now for the benchmarks, I'm going to be running 3D Mark Time Spy and Still Nomad, Blender Render Test, Cinebench R23 and Geekbench 6. The first five will go up against the CPUs from my last video, as I mentioned, to give you an idea of where this will sit. And it's also worth mentioning that all these benchmarks are free to download if you want to test them to your own system. So let's kick things off with 3D Mark Time Spy. Here the 9960X only managed 13,000 points, which was very low, especially compared to our gaming CPUs. But that is a bit of a trade-off. Threadripper isn't designed for gaming. And although it does look weird, this is a result that you can't expect with a high-end desktop platform. When we go to Still Nomad, we saw a high score of 9,290. And unlike the 3D Mark Time Spy test, this leans more heavily on the CPU while still factoring in some GPU performance. That's why the results stay much closer to the other processors that I've tested. It does benefit from the extra course that the Threadripper offers, but because the graphics card is still part of it, it doesn't run away with the score. Now in Blender, the 9960X shows exactly why it exists. In the monster scene, it hit 410 samples per minute compared to the 275 on the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D and the 264 on the Intel 285K. The lead is consistent across every scene and it's not small. We're talking a huge uplift in throughput. Even the top consumer CPUs like the 9950X 3D and the 285K just look mid-range next to the Threadripper here. And by the time you get down to the 9800X 3D, at 151 and 102, 75, it's just not even close. These results highlight exactly why Threadripper is designed for just chewing through demanding 3D workloads at a pace that just mainstream CPUs can't match. Now into Cinebench R23, well the Threadripper absolutely floored me, as you can tell by my reaction here. Wow, that's moving at a rate of knots, holy crap. I've never seen it move so fast in my life. The multi-core came in at 62,517 points. The closest that I've had on that system is the Intel Core Ultra 285K at just over 41,000. Even the Ryzen 9, around 40,000. And the 7950X just looks really small in comparison to 36,000. Just shows how far ahead Threadripper is in multi-core workloads. Single core doesn't really stand out, but um, the multi-core is obviously what you're buying Threadripper for and what it's all about anyway. Now Geekbench 5 wouldn't just run on the 9960X, I couldn't get it to run at all, it was just really problematic. Really frustrating because that's the test that I used on all my other CPUs, but I did get Geekbench 6 working. Here the 9960X scored 26,604 in multi-core and 3,237 in single core. So while we can't line it up directly against the older Geekbench 5 results from my previous tests, it gives you a good reference point if you want to download Geekbench 6 yourself and compare it to your own system. Now I will keep working to try and get Geekbench 5 to cooperate and I'll aim to include it when I use this in a full build in the near future. 
Now, in terms of power, the 9960X idles around 100 watts, so pretty high for doing nothing. But this is the chip you really want to keep busy. So under load, it peaked at 681 watts in Cyberpunk, but just 459 for Cinebench. So some of the workstation tasks you may find aren't as demanding for overall system draw as gaming. Now, compared to the 7950X, the 628 watts or the Core Ultra 9 at 607, Threadripper does pull much power, but I'd much rather see 459 for a short render than 680 constantly for a long gaming session. Now, in terms of thermals, the 9960X actually came out pretty solid. It peaked around 85.5 with an ambient of 21 degrees in the room. That gives us a delta of 64 degrees. That puts it cooler than the 7950X, even the Core Ultra 9 and the 9800X 3D in this test. But given the core count of the Threadripper and the power that it draws, 85 on a basic air tower, I think it's pretty respectable. If you were going to move up to something like the 9970 or the 9980X with more CCDs and more heat concentrated under that IHS, you'll definitely want a more beefy cooling solution. But for the 9960, this setup handled it surprisingly well. Now, last but not least, I want to have a bit of fun in DaVinci Resolve to see what Threadripper can really do. Here's my latest video for an example. Now we usually work in 4K and on my 7600X full resolution playback stutter so badly I usually have to drop multicam timelines to a quarter resolution just to keep things smooth. On Threadripper though it's a totally different story. You can run multicam at full 4K resolution it doesn't even break a sweat. Scrubbing through the timeline is also instant and effortless with no lag trailing behind like Mon Daily System. Now that's the kind of thing that really helps here because that could save you hours across a big project. Editing is obviously where you're going to spend most of the time in that software and slow scrubbing can just make it tedious and a real pain in the ass. Now when it comes to rendering the difference is just as clear on my 7600X with the 6750XT. My latest video took 4 minutes and 11 seconds to finish. On Threadripper, although paired with the 4090, the exact same render was 1 minute and 49 seconds, less than half the time. Now obviously not everyone's going to pair Threadripper with a graphics card like the 4090 but even if you use one that's a little bit less down the stack you have the CPU grunt which means you'll see the big gains in high bitrate file formats like raw video for example where you may see desktop CPUs just start to bottleneck. Now of course worth mentioning that a lot of people that buy Threadripper aren't going to just do this just for an experiment they're going to be professionals that use it as a tool just like the people that invest in a 5090 for content creation You've got a very steep upfront cost, but the payoff is going to be clear. If your render's finishing half the time, you can just jump straight onto the next project, especially important for those that are self-employed or work on commissions. Now, if you need to run Photoshop or rendering in the background, you can easily do that safely without risking a corrupted file. On my 7600X, I can cautiously run Lightroom during a render, but if I try and open Photoshop at the same time to edit that photo, it's just game over. And more often than not, my video render will just become corrupted. With Threadripper, multitasking is possible and reliable. And that's, of course, how you get more done in a single day. Now, as you can see from the charts, the more cores you give the 9960X to work with, the bigger the gap becomes. And you can see that clearly in the Blender and Cinebench tests. Now it's not going to be a chip for everyone, the idle draw is very high, the peak wattage is serious and the price tag is huge that goes with it, not to mention the motherboard and the specific memory that you're going to need. But for the people that's built for, creators, editors, 3D artists, it doesn't just save time, it changes what's possible in a single working day. And that's why the professionals are willing to pay for it and that's why Threadripper will just stand in a category of its own. Now the 9960X that we've covered here is also the entry point to the new 9000 series coming in around £1400. If you need a few more cores then there's the 9970X with 32 cores and 64 threads at roughly £2300. Then you've also got the top dog the 9980X which doubles to 64 cores and 128 threads. It doesn't quite double the price so coming in at just shy of £4500 but that is just the monster chip for people that generally need that kind of scale. Now I'm also looking to see if I can get the green light for a project where we can test the 9960X with some raw 6K footage, the kind of the kind of files that would just really punish the CPU and GPU. That would be the ultimate test for the platform. So if you want to see Threadripper push to its absolute limits, then make sure you're subscribed and ding the bell for something we'll hopefully have coming soon. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If there's anything else you'd like to know that I haven't covered, then please leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, or I'll queue it up to go into the build video when I do that very soon. 
I'll also leave the links for the products I featured in this video in the description box below if you want to pick anything up. Big thank you to Scan for sending out the CPU motherboard and the memory for this one. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.